Howdy there, guys. How's it going today? My name is Vertigo, and at long last, the Dark Souls 3 DLC, Ashes of Ariandel, has been released. So today, we're going to be playing through the DLC and exploring all the mysteries the new painted world has to offer us. If you guys are having issues accessing the DLC, the NPC that starts it is found in the cleansing chapel of the Cathedral of the Deep. If, you're ha if you can't see him, it's more than likely you have to reload the area before you can find him. So, for now, I'm going to shut up so you guys can enjoy the NPC dialogue. You must be. Oh. You don't know how long I've searched. Oh. Don't mind me. Didn't mean to fall apart. Now, Ashen One. I have a kindness to ask of you. My lady lives in the cold land of Ariandel. I need you to show her flame. A proper flame that will burn the rot away. If you truly are ash, then it must be fire that you seek. Thank you. They of Ash never fail. Just a moment, then. The painting of Ariandel. Well, rotted scrap of it, that is. Go on. Take it. Ashes were too. <laughs> and with that, we are now in the painted world of Ariandel. Um, there's a lot to talk about with that cutscene. Um, and we've actually found another NPC mm. here, uh, who's also excessively <sighs> creepy. Uh, so we're gonna pick up this item, and then we'll have a brief chat with this fine-looking fellow. Huh? Huh? Uh, have you just arrived? How very unusual. Just how long has it been? Rejoice, my new friend. For this is a true haven of the forlorn. The cold and gentle painted world of Ariandel. Quick, go along. Find one for yourself. A sweetly rotting bed to lie upon. So, with this encounter right off the bat, you've got to be kind of confused. Because this is, as far as we know, one of the Corvian... Um, well, do we really have a title for them? They're just Corvians, right? There's the basic Corvians and then the Corvian storytellers. Uh, this is just one of the Corvians sitting in this cave, but he's not aggressive like the rest of the Corvians, and he's intelligible, which I suppose we don't know if the other Corvians are since they never try to talk to us, but we can kind of assume that because all they really do ever is scream at us. But in this world, the Corvians like, can speak to us and have no desire to... Uh, attack us. Uh, as you guys can see, unlike the painted world of Ariamis in Dark Souls 1, you are able to warp out of this uh, via bonfire. Another interesting note, there is a message on the ground that said, before facing the painted world, face the depths of Lothric Castle. I haven't quite figured out what that means, but this is my New Game Plus character, so he certainly has... Uh, face the depths of Lothric Castle. So, right off the bat, we're going to encounter our first enemies of the Painted World. Um, and we will, we will be a short moment away from finding out who exactly they are. 
as soon as we finish dispatching of them. Um, but they're definitely winter warriors, you can kind of tell. They're very heavily dressed, fur around the shoulders, uh, cloaks, which are very common for winter dwellers. Um, and, well, you saw one of them was a fire breather, it appeared. Uh, and you would imagine in a world where it's been consumed by frost uh, that there are creatures here that would be susceptible to fire. So we're going to dispatch this guy. He's actually going to drop an item for us. I wanted to make sure I had good item discovery on. Um, so I have the gold serpent's ring plus one. Um, and in a moment... I'm going to switch up my equip to use um, the Crystal Sage's Rapier, which will also boost item discovery substantially. Uh, but for now, we're going to take a look at the Follower Helm. Helm worn by the Farron Followers. When a warrior of Farron fell to the abyss, the tall, lean followers with their hollowed eyes quietly appeared in groups to hunt them down. Farron and his watchers fell to ruin, and I forgot to read the rest of that, apparently. <laughs> um, the, the gist of that is that these warriors are members of Farron's legion who would hunt down those who fell to the abyss, became corrupted. Um, I was kind of curious what's going on with this tree. It's just kind of chilling in the middle of nowhere. It's got flame on its branches. Um, so we're gonna go over here, pick up this item, and immediately fall down in a small avalanche. <laughs> um, so that's, I thought that was a really cool transitionary scene. I haven't looked up anything about Ashes of Ariandel. I have literally looked at no spoilers, no gameplay. The only thing I've watched is the trailer. Uh, it, it accidentally released on Xbox One two or three days ago. And I have avoided it like the plague. I do not want spoilers. I want to play this game as it was meant to be played. Uh, and so far, I'm really enjoying it. So, when you come down here, you encounter a pack of wolves. I thought this was a really cool encounter. Since the wolves don't just rush you like other mobs do. They will circle you and stalk you as a pack of wolves would. Um, if you guys heard just now... There was a, there's a couple howls now, and that has actually summoned more wolves. I wanted to try and get a look at it, but I wasn't really able to. If these wolves were summoned from elsewhere, or if they just kind of spawned in to join the hunt. But it, it sounds like there's like three-ish packs that come down to attack you. I'm not 100% sure on that. If... They just spawn infinitely if you don't kill them. Uh, but that's definitely going to be something to look into. Because that would be a really interesting feature. If the wolves just never endingly spawned. Um, but anyway. We need to talk about the opening cutscene. With the old man in the cleansing chapel. Um, you could tell at the end of the cutscene with his laughing. There's kind of sinister intent. Uh, as he mentions, the Ashen are now two, uh, which implies to me that he has already found somebody and trapped them in the painted world. Uh, there seems to be some deceit going on, as he offers a scrap of a portrait of the painted world of Ariandel, and I'm trying my darndest not to say the painted world of Ariamis. Um, it seems like he's trying to trap people in this world, even though people are free to warp out, but maybe that's more of a gameplay mechanic than a storyline aspect. Um, so he tricks us to coming here. He wants us to show his mistress true flame that will burn away the rot. Thus far, we do not know what this rot actually is, only that in the dialogue with the Corvian and the beginning of the DLC, um, he mentions, find yourself a sweetly rotting bed to lie in. And there seemed to be kind of a fungus 
Not a hundred percent sure what it was. Some kind of flowering fungus uh, growing on the sides of the cave that he was laying on. So that's that's the only thing we have to refer to the rot thus far. Um, so that's going to be a secret to uncover in the DLC. Down here, we seem to find more of that fungus. And at first, what I thought were Corvians absolutely are not. They are disgusting fly creatures. Um, just laying in this bed. Uh, presumably they're there for being responsible for that corpse's death. But they're just sitting there. Um, so naturally, I'm going to dispatch of these guys in true Vertigo fashion and snipe them from a distance because I don't know what they are and they scare me. So I want nothing to do with them. <laughs> um, anyway, back to the opening cutscene. The man has brought us here to burn away some kind of rot for his mistress. Who his mistress is, what this rot is, we don't know yet. All I've seen are fan theories uh, that the mistress is Velka or the mistress is some other deity. Um, I have almost seen no talk about the rot. So we're going to have to explore the DLC and figure what those things are. It is kind of unusual that there would be some kind of fungus growing through the snow. Uh, snowy climates are generally dry, despite, you know, the fact that they're constantly surrounded in water. The frozen atmosphere creates a very arid, um, scene for them, and most fungus prefer, uh, humid, dark areas. So, for there to be some kind of fungus growing in the snow... It's kind of lending itself to some kind of supernatural curse. The other concern here is that there are living trees in the painted world. Uh, and whether or not that's connected to the fungus remains to be seen. But if there's some kind of unusual botanical presence, it seems that it would lend itself to more. And we know trees have a huge presence in the Dark Souls lore, uh, stemming from the great arch trees during the Age of Dragons. So we have to kind of figure out what these trees are as well. My first instinct is that they're witch trees, uh, and I'll have to look at the item descriptions that lend themselves to that. Um, but that's my first instinct, just because of their figure, they're casting spells with fire, it just seems to make sense, although it doesn't seem super connected to the story. You'll have to see the implications of what the witch trees would be uh, in relation to the painted world, because it seems that the painted world of Ariandel serves a similar purpose as the painted world of Ariamis, in that it is a refuge for those that don't belong in the real world. As the Corvian mentioned at the beginning, this is a true haven for the Forlorn. So, we've come across our second bonfire. We're going to take a rest here, which is good. This place wears your Estus down real fast. There's large packs of enemies that attack quickly. Uh, those, um, we'll call them witch trees for now, uh, attack with... Uh, well, this is one of the spells we picked up. The... It references Pontiff Sullivan before he left the Painted World, which means he was raised here. Uh, Pontiff Sullivan was born and raised inside the painting, but had little use for his frigid homeland, for he had not yet experienced true loss. So there's a bit more lore that we're going to have to discuss, uh, Pontiff Sullivan's relation to the Painted World. Take a look at this. If this isn't the Painted World of Ariamis, I don't know what is. Um, so yet again, another connection to the other Painted Worlds. That's going to do it for today, guys. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please drop a like, tune in for more. I'll see you guys in the next one, and you guys can have an awesome day.